It is my pleasure to welcome as our poetic opener, Josephine Larray. And if it wasn't for our going back to this Zoom format, we we couldn't, you know, it would do this. So I'm I'm so happy we're 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 here in the space. And Josephine's words have been read live on stage and in Zoom rooms across the internet, published in literary journals and anthologies in 10 countries and three languages, but to music danced and integrated into paintings and visual art. Her poem, The Tea Set, was shortlisted for the 2019 Room Poetry Prize. She has two collections, Unity and uh, the Calgary Herald bestseller, The Cowichan Series, both of which integrate her poetry and photography. She has taught workshops through the Alexander Writers Center Society, When Words Collide, and the Wine Country Writers Festival at its participating in the Quebec project Femme en Parole. She con contributes to the editorial staff of Parkland Poets and the international anthology Poetry X Hunger. Welcome, Josephine. Thank you. It's great to be back and that was a wonderful open mic. Um, I'm coming to you from Mokinsis, uh, which we call Calgary, the confluence of the two rivers and its land originally inhabited and traversed by different groups, the Pekani, Siksika, Gainai, Nakoda, and Tsitsina. And I'm grateful for these peoples, for their stewardship of the land and for bringing language and poetry to the land. Uh, I was intrigued by the theme tonight, linguistic diversity, because I, I really think that language serves to express and communicate and preserve culture. So I'd like to start off with a piece that was published by Wax <clears throat> Poetry and Art in 2017 called Cradle Rhythms. New Canadians, they called us, the families on our street, Italians and the Greeks, Portuguese, Ukrainians, new Canadians. To distinguish us from old Canadians, perhaps like Mrs. Brown from Two Doors Down, a moustache and a stubby black dog who waddled when he walked a carpet beater made of metal and wood. New Canadians who brought old words from the old country, like scula pasta for draining spaghetti and scula piatta for draining the plates, paletta and scupa to sweep up the floor. Who brought old habits from the old country, like wearing black the rest of your life if your husband passed away, one arma, and praying to Sant'Onofrio to help recover something you had lost to the Madonna to assure safe travel, who brought old ideas from the old country like indulging children, le picilegge, and respecting the elderly, le vicarege, and not forgetting where you came from. Unforgettable moments this growing up in a new Canada like 45s on the record player, dancing when company arrived pleating, tying and unfolding Kleenex tissue, rainbow colored flowers to tape onto the silver straddle chief when a cousin got married. Watching Nana roll paper thin lasagna from the magic of flour, eggs and a pizzagoni of salt using a stegnatore, a four foot rolling pin my father fashioned from her, for her from an old broomstick like picking basil from a garden, warm and fragrant for the jars of sarsa we were preserving in the Banyu Marina. And then there were the rhythms of a language that predates Italian, this Sicilian, with roots as wide and wild as its branches, not just in Latin, but in Greek and in the tongues of the Spaniards and the Moors and the Normans and the Carthaginians who came to the sun-drenched triangle of an island and made it home. Rhythms that continue to resonate, like the Nina Nana lullabies that soothed us as babes, like the Tarantella frenzy we danced at weddings, like the pluckings of the mandolin, sad, sweet strains that speak of longing, of leaving the beloved land to cross an eternity of salt. These were my cradle rhythms, the sounds I in turn rock my babies to, the snippets and stories I pass on to them of the subtleties and complexities of what it means to me to be a new Canadian. 
<laughs> Thank you. The second piece is on the computer, so I'm going to just open up that screen. And it was written for um, Il Piccolo Musea, Museo della Poesia, the small poetry museum. So in northern Italy, in the town of Piacenza, they've converted a, ch a church to a poetry museum. I'm going to read it in both halves. I'll read the English first and then the Italian. Garden tea, poetry, plucking leaves to seep in boiling water. Comfrey tea, comfort me. Nettle tea, heal me. Bay leaf tea, soothe me. Mint, awaken me. Chai, take me on a journey to exotic places redolent with exotic names. Darjeeling, oolong, rooibos, scented lavender or bergamot from the terraces of Burma to the land of thunderbolts. Chamomile, open up the portal to my Sicilian past. Return me to the terrace of my mother and her mother and her mother. Poetry, garden tea. Raccogliando foglie diverse del giardino, te, poesia, acqua bollente, consolida per confortarmi. Ortica per guarirmi, alloro per consolarmi, menta per risvegliarmi, chai per trasportarmi ai luoghi esotici, riempire la mia bocca con nomi esotici, darjeeling, oolong, rooibos, profumo di lavanda, di bergamotto, della terrazza di Birmania alla terra del fulmine e poi... Camomilla, apre la porta sul mio passato, traslocami alla Sicilia, alla terrazza della mia mamma, della sua mamma, della sua mamma. Una tazza di poesia, una tazza di te. Thank you. And for the third piece, I was inspired um, by Alice Major, who submitted a poem in last year's um, Stroll of Poets anthology about laundry lines called Laundry Hearts. And the line that inspired me is a whole world crisscrossed, like the maze of laundry lines. And this one too is on my computer. And there's two words that I don't know um, that people will know. So sotana is an, it's like a slip. A woman would wear a sotana underneath the dress. And Ganotchera is an undershirt. So my poem is called Laundry Lines. Laundry lines traversing, intersecting this time and away, this land and past. Nonna's broad cotton sotana, eyelet embroidered at the neckline. Papa's woolen ganotiera, knit to keep out cold. Napkins, aprons, tablecloths, waving a warm welcome. Adolescent blood-stained bedsheets bleached white again by sun. Popsicle-hued rompers I sewed when the kids were young. Do you remember those breezy days? My undergarments snugged up next to yours on the laundry line. Thank you. Well, well done. Oh my goodness, Josephine, thank you so much. Oh, it's wonderful that this could happen. I have to say that again. Such a beautiful feminine sensibility it, that came through a sense of yearning, um, intersection of poetry and family and tradition and tea. <laughs> so beautiful, <laughs> so beautiful, those convergences. Oh, just want them to echo. Yeah, the tea was wonderful. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Now it's time to welcome Francine. Francine, I see you there. <laughs> You're hello and welcome. And Francine Morasti, I'd like to welcome you to Planet Earth Poetry and we were really hoping that you would you would come to us from Saskatchewan and join us in Victoria, but maybe another time it will work out. But this is what what uh, has worked out and we're delighted. So I want to tell everyone that Francine is joining us from Saskatoon. Is that correct tonight? Oh, I think you're muted. 
I'm in Pelican Narrows. You it's are? A, okay. It's a reserve in northern Saskatchewan. Okay, well, good to know. We, we all started a little early in the evening, um, just letting people know where we were zooming in from. So Francine is a member of the Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation, nation affluent Nihithawa, Nithawa, you'll have to help me with that <laughs> speaker. Nihido, Nio, Nihido. Well, Cree uh, has five dialects, and I'm each dialect, so it's I would pronounce it Nido. But South is a wide dialect, and they say Nihio. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, so uh, uh, Francine is um, a general counsel and executive assistant to the chief and council of Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation. She is a winner of the 2019 Indigenous Voices Awards. And I think she, tonight she'll be reading uh, some poems to us from her, her uh, recent collection of poetry, Poetry of a Northern Res Girl. And it's a poetry collection written during a period of trauma while the author, Francine, was working as a statement taker and counsel to the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls in 2017. And this book portrays Francine's lived experience as an Indigenous woman raised on the Pelican Narrows Reserve in the 1980s, her memories of wilderness, her experiences as a residential school survivor. And with this collection, Francine seeks to teach and inform Canadians of her foundational truth, growing up as an Indigenous woman on the land in a remote area of Northern Saskatchewan. Welcome, Francine. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. So um, I don't live in Pelican. I live in Saskatoon, but I come to do some work here on uh, the reserve where I grew up. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's um, the closest town, I guess, would be Flin Flon, Manitoba. And Flin Flon is just right on the border. And so um, Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation is actually a pretty vast territory in northeastern Saskatchewan. And um, I couldn't say like how, how big the, the territory is, but we've been living here for, for quite a while. Um, and our band actually adhered to Treaty 6, but we live in Treaty 10 territory. And so how that happened, happened is, I don't know, but there's a history behind that. Um, so I published my book here, Iskutiw um, Squeal, Poetry of a Northern Res Girl. So this one came out in July of this year. And just recently I was long listed for the CBC Poetry Prize. Um, I didn't make it on the short list, but I was uh, I was long listed, so I, I'll read that poem as well, the one I submitted. But um, so I'm gonna share some po poetry from from this book. It only has 49 poems, and um, some of them have the Cree language within them. But there's also five poems that were translated into the Cree language. And my father, John Marasti, he's, he's really good at translating the Cree language. And he translated all my poems. And then there's another um, book that's gonna be coming out that's gonna be in the Cree. All, all my poetry will be translated into the Cree language. And that'll come out in um, February of next year. So I'm pretty excited about that to have. Um, my uh, poetry in the Cree language. And so, <clears throat> um, I will just start reading here. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read a poem. The first poem is called Nugum, 
And in my language, Nogum means grandmother. Nogum, my grandmother, was born in a wigwam close to Burntwood River up in northern Manitoba. She remembers the day her one eye opened to see the sunlight through the opening at the top. She, sp she spent her childhood with Uguma, remembers the time they killed a moose along with her mushum while on a morning canoe ride, telling me she was the one who spotted the moose. One time, Uguma tied her to a bedpost, went to look for firewood. Nugum untangled the knot, walked to the lake, a child of five. Hearing Uguma approaching, she went back to the bedpost and tied herself back up. The next day, she heard Uguma tell a friend she had seen her tracks down by the lake. There was snow on the ground yet. Nugum had to follow Uguma around after that. Nugum was a convert to Catholicism after going to the United Church with Uguma and Omosuma in a horse and buggy way up in northern Manitoba. Otawia, her father, called her Nistomitano, third, never satisfied with one piece of candy holding out her hand to say, Guttak, one more. Nugum is 90. She still has her amazing memory, her sharp wit and intelligent humor. Nugum. So um, I never really had aspirations to, um, I guess, publish a poetry book. I just happened to start writing poetry um, while I was working for Missing and Murdered Women, um, the National Inquiry. Um, my, I first started as a statement taker. And it, within that job, I would be sitting in a hotel room with uh, family members of missing or murdered women. And they would be relaying the story to me about what happened to their loved one. And the stories were very traumatic. And I would be hearing maybe five, I'd say in a day, I could listen to two a day. And in a week, I, I could listen to maybe five to 10 of these uh, horrific stories. And because the National Inquiry was really fast paced, I didn't have a lot of time for self care. And um, I guess, um, as because I had nowhere to go, and my mind was really um, in turmoil, I started writing. And um, so I, I every evening I would write while I was at home when I wasn't traveling. And eventually I had enough um, poems to publish a book and I wasn't even going to publish a book but I allowed my friend I guess to read my poems and she said oh well these are really good maybe you should consider um, you know having somebody look at them maybe they would want to publish so that's how that came to be it is the poetry is a result of the trauma that I experienced and a lot of the places, a lot of the poems that I write about um, go to places where I feel safe, um, like growing up with my family, um, going to the trap line, um, uh, growing up on the reserve, time spent with my family. But I also write about uh, my experience as a residential school survivor and um, some of the experiences that um, First Nations people um, have collectively experienced such as racism and um, uh, uh, residential schools, um, missing and murdered women, um, just different things like that. So um, my next poem is called Since Time Immemorial. <clears throat> I'm also a lawyer and I do work as a general counsel for my band at the moment. And uh, this is a poem I wrote um, 
uh, it's I I was having um, um, a time I guess when I when I did my law school application and they had asked me a question in the application and I didn't know how to answer it but this is how the poem goes since time immemorial I've heard these words spoken repeatedly as a child the story of my indigenous history shared with audience after audience burnt into my memory. We've been here since time immemorial. It means a time so long ago that people have no memory or knowledge of it. Filling out my law school application. How long has your family lived in Saskatchewan? I pause for a moment, then write since time immemorial. What would have been other options before Saskatchewan was, we were. I got in, nobody questioned my answer. So this one is a recollection of um, my mother's experience when the authorities tried to, um, I guess, get them to go to residential school and they came to my grandfather's house to ask for the children. And it's called Precious Inheritance. Joe, we're here for your children. They will receive the best education by God's holy men and women. Treated only with dignity and respect, they will eat the best foods. Comfort and laughter will fill their days. No, that's okay, Joe says. I can take care of my own children. Now, Joe, if you don't allow your children to be educated, you will not receive your monthly check. Giam, who cares? I don't need your check. You can shove it where the sun don't shine. All three walk away, one in a headdress, one in a black robe with a fancy cross, one in a pressed suit. From my hi hiding place, I emerge a little girl of six. The significance of my father's giam escapes me for years. Language intact, traditions unbroken, culture continuous, inheritance for my children. This one is called Family Vacation. Little brown girl longed to go to Disneyland. We went to the trap line instead, McGinnis Lake, on a beaver float plane high above the trees. Lake of <laughs> green upon green. Unloading the cargo on a rickety wooden dock, hauling packs of flour and potatoes to the one room cabin with a bung bed and a queen where Ma and Pa slept, a wooden table and chairs all handmade, a small black stove with a long metal pipe peeking from the roof. The radio high above tucked away in the corner beyond the reach of children, people telling stories, music playing, one summer Johnny Cash ring of fire and it burns, burns, burns. A guttawan outside where Ma cooked. A pot of tea faithful beside the coals. Swimming all day in the dark brown water, following the many trails leading out like spider legs. Never venturing far, didn't want to meet a bear. Making tree forts, tag and croquet to late evening. Supper around the campfire. Loons telling us the weather tomorrow. Piling into the cabin. Dad lighting the kerosene lamp. When everyone was in place, he extinguished the hiss. He told us kids a few tales, always ending with golden hand. No one told golden hand like dad, heart pumping, chilling. I'd rather have McGinnis Lake than Disneyland any summer.
sorry, I didn't really put. Okay, this one is called Wisagi Chak. And in our culture, Wisagi Chak is a trickster. <clears throat> Wisagi Chak came to visit last night. He was in the mighty wind that blew across the prairies. He was looking for those who would keep his memory alive of the days when he played tricks on all the animals. He told me of the time he danced with the birds, blindfold dance, he called it. In fact, he was getting his supper. He killed a few birds before he got caught and the birds flew off. He's a trickster, you see. He still longs for those days. I listened to a few stories, then he left with the wind. He didn't tell me this one, but I heard it when I was a child. He was lost in the woods on a hot day, sat on a rock and burnt his skin off, left howling, must have gotten turned around. When he came upon the rock again and saw two pieces of dried meat, he was so hungry, he took them and ate them. The animals teased him saying, but he said, no, my grandma gave me this dried meat. I'm sure this is not the story he wants passed around, but who could forget the day the trickster ate his own ass. So I don't know how much time I have left. Uh, oh, you have time. Um, take as much time as you like. <laughs> we, we, we don't want you to stop. <laughs> Keep going. You definitely have time to read some more poems. This one is called The School Fool, and it's, a, it's about a situation in residential school. There was a boy in residential school. Everyone thought a fool peed his bed almost every night. Holy brother seeing yellow, yelled, go downstairs and take your sheets to wash. Listen, fool, you know I'm boss. The boy dread walked downstairs past the cafeteria and everyone's hysteria. I joined in with a grin, never thinking it was a sin. One winter morning when I discovered that I peed on my sheet, I went down and I started to cry. I asked the Lord why. The school fool who knew the rule came to my aid. I'll take down your sheets, don't despair, I'll take care of this affair. He expected no return and that day I learned about the heart of the fool and how we were so cruel. So this story here, I worked as a as a, um, I worked in the residential school process. And this is a true story that I heard and I made it into a poem because I thought it was um, so heartwarming, I guess, in a way of how this person helped, I guess, these other boys that, you know, he would take on that embarrassment for them. Um, this one is called Reconciliation. Settler colonialism is resistant to change. It is stubborn. But a new vision is being created of reconciliation. I see baby steps. Hope is born in my heart, even as I experience discrimination and violence. In the future, when I'm gone, if my forgiveness is needed, for all the injustices I've experienced to make this vision a reality. I give it freely, I forgive. This one is called, I'm a Nihiao Isquiu, and it means I'm a Cree woman. With beautiful brown skin, Long, beautiful hair, I comb and braid with care. Brown, beautiful eyes, no, I don't believe your lies. 
I love me, you see, I am Cree. I love the indigenous way of life, sometimes filled with strife, racism, lateral violence, discrimination. But regardless, I'm a proud member of a Cree nation. Some feel ashamed to be, but no, not me. I laugh with glee because I'm Cree. I am more than what you see. I live sovereign, inside I'm free. Yes, I got some academic degrees, but that's not what makes me. It's this Nihiao blood in me. I'm Cree, a Nihia Esquil. And this is a poem I wrote about my reserve called, it's called Pelican Narrows. And I'm in Pelican Narrows today. I'm from Pelican Narrows, a res up north with crows and sparrows, nestled between pine trees by a lake with gentle breeze, a place where Nietzsche's like to tease. We are better known as Crees. Pelican people like to fish, to catch the big one, a shore lunch on a metal dish. And when someone farts, they say, whiss. Pelican people like their bannock and tea. When they're surprised, they say, ee. Up north in the bush, they feel free. Looking for agreement, they say, che. Pelican people like to camp, tents, blankets, kerosene lamps, driving the boat usually for gramps, through Wood Lake and up Frog Portage Ramp. Pelican people like moose meat, fried with potatoes and onions, bastiwias, moose jerky is a treat. Iwamina midomitsu chick sweets. There are many more things to say, but for now, I will call it a day, say. So I don't want to read all my poems, but these are the poems that are written in this book. And I, I will also read the, the poem that I submitted for the CBC Poetry Contest. It's on my phone here, and I'm tuning in through to zoom on this phone so i'll have to um, maybe turn off the the video but i'll still be on the voice okay this one is called lunch at pine valley indian reservation and i was taking a poetry class and the prompt was to write something about our childhood so this is what I wrote. Adam Chandler is in a love triangle. Craft dinner and wieners on the stove. Banna cooling on the countertop. She cooks for all her children. Miles away, Erica Kane is getting ready for another ball. Wearing a sequin sparkly dress, matching clutch. 20 minutes to eat, 10 to clean, and 10 to go. Pine Valley's got another doctor, thick wavy hair, tanned. I scoop a cup of water from the cistern in the corner, pickle jar for a cup. Evil Janet has her twin sister locked up in an abandoned whale and is living her best life, no regrets. The bus is coming, my brothers run out the door. I swallow the last spoon of craft dinner, perfect. Powdered cheese, macaroni, milk, and butter. Getting ready to walk out the door. Are you still dating Jackson? I leave on a cliffhanger. So that's it. That's all I have to share because I'm, I'm just a new poet here, so I don't have a lot of material. <laughs> oh, you shared so much. So much.